the Declaration of the Rights of Man, that there are such things as human rights. Human rights, not the rights of the nobility, the lesser rights of this and this and this. Human rights, everybody. And this hey, is Galvete. a long list, right? The declarations of the Rights of Man. Yeah, no, it wasn't, a, it wasn't exactly a list. It was sort of a small philosophical treatise about the notion of rights. And, um, and we still are trying to get that. Today. In America. I mean, we, in America, but, you know, do the Palestinians have rights? No. So uh, uh, we're trying to achieve what the French Revolution still was trying to achieve and with the same forces uh, against us. But France today is far ahead of us as far as achieving it, don't you think? Well, yes and no. There's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of hidden class structure in France, and, you know, we just had the riots in the in the banlieue against them, and people burning tires and Sarkozy coming in and saying, you know, we're going we're gonna, to uh, up the police force. And uh, he called them the canai. Canai is the rabble, but it was used by the nobility to, in the French Revolution to talk about, you know, the people who wanted revolution. It was called the canai. Uh, uh, and the canai, uh, Sarkozy uh, won by talking about the canai. And then there's Le Pen and, you know, the French, French politics has a way to, ways to go. Mm. They, they have suffered from uh, these power structures that we are uh, forcing on the world of, uh, you know, of free trade, uh, rampant capitalist, capitalism, and corporate control, and mil military power. But we see what we have here in America. And by comparison, France is, uh, I would say, far ahead of us. They're, they're not involved in the, uh, the Iraq War. Uh, they have many parties in the parliament. There's, the, there's of course, the uh, Sarkozy party and there's the Le Pen party, but there's also a strong uh, socialist party and a communist party and uh, a couple I of others. I say so strong, but, mm -hmm. but yes, there are. There are parties because there's a parliamentary system. We don't have it, but we have a one-party system. You know. But in, in France, if, or, or any parliamentary system, if you get 10% of the votes, you get 10% of the seats in the legislature. Whereas here, if you get 49% of the votes, you get no seats. Right? Um, so uh, the, the smaller voices, the, the, the large continuum of public talk doesn't happen here, but it does happen when 10% are official legislators. They are treated with respect. They are in the newspapers. They can get on television because they're in the legislature. And they're only 10%. But that they have an official voice. Here, everyone has a voice. And here, and here we don't. I mean, if you win, you win. And if you don't win, forget it. You're, you're invisible. So um, that's, that has to do more with, I think, uh, the choice of system, not having a par parliamentary system. This book isn't even written yet, much less out. I mean, it is, it is written. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And, and I'm working, you know, with my editor on, on these final changes. Take this out, say this, not this. Um, um, do you really need that? Is this true? You know, all this kind of stuff. We have this very nice uh, electronic back and forth, uh, so we don't have to do paper. We just look at this manuscript. And that's the way we've been working for the last few years. You have to hurry up and finish it. I'm anxious to read it. I can send you the, uh, the um, file. OK. Yeah. Uh, well, Mark, I think the viewers would like to know something about your background. Are you originally from Vermont? Where did you uh, grow up and go to school? I, I grew up in New York. Uh, I was a red diaper baby, um, which means my parents were communists. So you know, I was brought up in, a, in an atmosphere of uh, political concern and uh, anti-racism, specifically. And um, my father was a huge reader. Uh, I, wa I was not until, in fact, I'm pretty illiterate still. Um, and I went to school, I went to college uh, as a chemistry major. And I went to graduate school for two years in bio biochemistry. And then I decided I hated that. And I went to, uh, I got a master's in theater at UCLA. And I had been doing theater and then radical theater, professional theater and then radical theater. 
Uh, and I came to, I was invited actually to Vermont um, by Jerry Witherspoon at the time, the president of Goddard College, to, to do theater, to do radical theater at Goddard College, and that's what brought me here. And then f uh, I came in 69, and the very next year, Jerry uh, invited Bread and Puppet to come up um, to be the theater in residence at Goddard, which was a great move because it brought them from New York into Vermont, and they've since, you know, rooted as an terrifically important um, Vermont institution. And in fact, I wrote, and I've been working with Bread and Puppets since 1970 when they came to Goddard and we just, uh, I fell in love with them. And Peter and I um, did a lot of shows, music, especially music shows, music and uh, theater shows together. And then I wrote this book um, uh, about, it's, a, it's sort of a memoir of, of 35 years with the theater of anecdotes and musings and speculations on what the Bread and Puppet is all about. Uh, and this came out in 2004, won a Book of the Year award, actually, as best book in theater. It's a nice book, Rehearsing with God, it's called. The Book of the Year award, uh, who's that given by? Well, I guess there are various ones. This, is, uh, this was uh, a publisher's group called um, for Word, and for capital W, Word. And uh, at the uh, um, Book Exposition of America, they give out an annual award. It's a prize. So we're at the, I'm at the exposition for, I don't remember, maybe this or some other book. And then it was announced that this other book, which is uh, published by Chelsea Green, not with the publisher that I was there with, uh, won the Book of the Year Award in theater. And so at the Chelsea Green uh, desk, or whatever those stands are called, they're busy slapping these stars on the, you know. These, uh, uh, but the Book of the Year Award, that means that this group of publishers actually believes that your book was the best of all the books written during that year. No, no, in theater. In the, oh, in, in the category of theater. The theater. Yeah, theater is still, there, there are a lot of books in theater. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, no, it's a good book. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a good book. It's interesting. It's probably not like any other book, in a, you know, theater book or theater history book. Or it's about a culture. And this one isn't that long, so people can go out and read it. And uh... well, they, none of them are that long. Inside Dreams is the longest, but um, you know, as as over the ten years that I've been writing, people's tastes have come down so that they want shorter and shorter books with bigger and bigger print and larger and larger margins. You know, my, uh, uh, at a certain point, my, my agent said, I'm getting all these calls. Mark, don't you have any 200-page books with large margins? <laughs> you know? So, you know, that's where it's at. I think we may be losing our capacity to read uh, com long, complex books. It's, everything is so visual. Everything is so fast. I don't know. I mean, that would be a huge cultural event if we could really not read anymore, only scan. Uh, basically, the way graphic novels have come up, I mean, I used to read comic books as a kid, but that's as a kid, then you start reading real books, right? But now people are reading comic books. People are reading children's books like Harry Potter and saying, oh, it's really for adults. <laughs> but, I mean, there's this general kind of loss of the ability to read that goes along with the kind of infantilization of the culture so that everybody honors their child and you don't want to get too complex and I'm so tired I just want to come home and be entertained and all that stuff. So it's, it's hard when you write serious fiction, even if it's comical, to um, find a wide readership. You said you were a red diaper baby, but then w when you were talking about the French Revolution uh, a few minutes ago, I had the feeling that you weren't very sympathetic toward the goals of the revolution. I'm very sympathetic toward the guy. It's just that we don't. It's another hidden thing, you know. This book explores things that we don't generally know about the French Revolution. I was surprised to find that. I was surprised to find this stuff out, you know. That, but the 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 good side of this was that this isn't entirely a class struggle issue. It's a human issue that there are human beings, regardless of class, who can see the value of the, the rights of man. Right? There are human beings. Uh, Guillotin was, was high bourgeoisie. High bourgeoisie. He was a doctor. 
he was a, he was a famous Parisian doctor. Okay? He was in charge of public health in Paris. He, was, he got involved in all this um, smallpox vaccination. I mean, he, he was very important, and he, at the same time, because of who he was, he treated the poor for nothing. You know? And he, uh, they didn't have health insurance. Right? And so it was surprising to me that the human heart can um, triumph over the class issues 